map number one of the game for third is the best map in 2 and 2 history. Welcome to Goldshire. In this unusual... What do we have? Oh, actually we see Night Elf Orc on Infi and TH's side. Plus, of course, the renowned combo of human undead from uh, one, two, uh, from WFC and Yumiko. So, I forgot to do the production for this, so I need some time. <laughs> Actually, that's correct. That is... Only the score is wrong, and then we're good to go into map number one. First team who scores three wins gets the bronze medal and the additional prize pool. 600 bucks for the winner, 300 for the fourth place. And yeah, let's have some fun here. Okay. So, this is WFZ in red alongside Yumiko. Oh, who's actually playing a barracks? Double barracks! Alright. This is not uh, what we, or what I expected. I thought we would see a no barrack play again, but it seems like they switched it up. And now it's mass footman. Maybe no tier 3 tech from... Ah, uh, damn it. Yeah. Uh, maybe no tier 3 tech from Yumiko then, but a very long tier 1 phase with defend footman seems to be the best alternative here for me. A little feeding from WFZ. Maybe he's... Oh, he is going no crypt and lich first. Okay. Do we have an acolyte here? Yes, we do. But Infi is taking care of this. With Windwalk, so no Tower Rush here. We also see, of course, no Graveyard. That means no Skull. That doesn't help. Dark Ranger first from TH. And oh, man, this Dark Ranger has a history in games versus Yumiko. WCA qualifiers. Nice detonate. WCA qualifiers, they were fighting for the final spot in 2016. And Yumiko was preparing a lot for Human Mirror for this uh, final. And then TH decided, okay, if you practice... Human Mirror the entire time. I'm just playing Night Elf because my random is just that good. And he defeated him with the help of the Dark Ranger. Um, so yeah. A player's force Pension of one top. position with a Huntress build for TH. And what do they want to accomplish with Lich Blood Mage? Siphon Mana, of course, not that bad. The Blade Master without Windwalk is not super good in the early stages. And if the Dark Ranger... Well, the Dark Ranger is super nice against all the footmen. But where's the damage coming from? The Blade Master can't do everything alone. Especially if there's Frost Armor here. And the pressure from Yumiko's side is already pretty good with five footmen. I mean, double barracks is... Can be so strong in the early stages. Falls off the cliff, of course, later on, but I think Footmen have a very good duration. As long as the heroes are low, as long as there's no magic damage, because what can really do any all oh, the Lich? What is he doing with the Lich? The Blade Master is just waiting already. No coil, obviously. And this is the first kill after just four minutes. And of course, they welcome this experience with open arms. Zero experience on the Blood Mage, not a single kill. And now without Frost Armor, what can he really do? I mean, the Blade Master is zoning a lot, is blocking there, the path. And there is no healing in the Undead's main. He's going for some ghouls, he's taking tier 2. But can that save him? The tier 2 tech from the Undead is a little bit delayed compared to the normal build they play with no barracks, Yumiko feeding. And yeah, what can you do without a shop now? Trying to surround the Blade Master? Yeah, build a wall or a buffalo line between Blade Master and Blood Mage, but they have so much Blade time now. Infi is attacking. DH stays on tier 1 with Double Huntress. Double Huntress, of course, a very nice solution against this Mass Footman. Otherwise, you would uh, face Defend if you go Mass Archers or Early Dryads or anything. So Yumiko 
going for an expansion now? While the Blade Master is around, and in the meantime, TH is doing the same, Tree of Life already in the works. He has to be super careful with this engine of war, but the Dark Ranger goes on to level 2. Acro has shifted, or does it? It's kind of close here, but no, he keeps the engine of war alive. Bigger potion of mana, which is certainly nice. And here, no item yet. Overseer still up for grabs. Blade Master's not here. Scroll of the Beast! One of the best items in 2 on 2, I'd say, especially from a consumable, because both armies are benefiting this 25% attack bonus. Of course, units a lot more important in 2 on 2 than they are in 1 on 1. Oh, good army of the dead here going over. But I don't think they can do too much. I mean, towers are coming up already. Lich and Blood Mage are creeping. So we have level 2, we have Nova, we have Banish. And therefore, Dark Ranger should be a little bit in trouble. Also the Blade Master, not the tankiest hero of all time. But we saw this before. Blade Master can creep this north super duper easy. A town is under siege. Only the item carrying creeps, of course, but it's already nice. Take a lot of experience away from the other team if they decide to go north. But at the same time, he decides, okay, let's put on some pressure here. You have peasants, a lot of peasants, a lot of them are hurt, and I have a Dark Ranger. You know the outcome of that, or hopefully, if you're not super new to Walker 3, you should know that. Shop is up, but the Bouncing Glaives from the Huntress, they do so much damage. Nice banish here. And the first tower is up, second tower about to be up. Is this timing right by TH and Infi? They can certainly knock down this expansion with the help of the Blade Master and the Shadow Hunter. But how much will they lose? Nothing as it seems. Nice retreat. Watch a ward killed, but yeah, this expansion is so late compared to this one, which is up. Tier 2 tech by TH now, no tier 3, uh, but Wyvern. Triple Beastiary Wyvern on Infi's side. And here are the first two. And yeah, have fun defending this now. I mean, there are two guard towers. Is a fiends coming already? No, just the death knight. Oh, there's the first fiend. Don't know if they have uh, the web upgrade yet, but the positioning for the Wyvern is superb. Even more damage coming towards this town hall. If he has to cancel this twice, it's almost game, I think. Skeletons. Well, yeah, this is too much damage. Nova can't help. It slows down a little bit. But actually, the damage is not sufficient. He has to send this one back. Also, a coil coming his way. It's of course super helpful that both heroes can attack air. Now three Wyvern, but the Sound Hall is up. Nice defense. And the Huntress are suffering quite hard. He does have a huge amount of skeletons though. Not trying to go for a surround, not trying to go for the town hall here. 27 no, supply and 25. Oh, of course. Of course! The Eras continues and Blacksidal is up, that's good. He can immediately reproduce the Acolytes. And the first Fiend is there. Should have wept. But this position is so good for Wyvern. They can attack here, then they can fly back, attack here. There are towers, but should still be possible. But if they get a good amount of fiends up, this wyvern strategy is completely useless. Engine of Wind now for Talents, most likely. Talents and wyvern, man. What a combo. As I said, this is not Raider Walker. A player's this is something else. Attack. Lich level 3. DK close to level 2. Unholy Aura will help a lot, of course. For movement speed and HP regen. Blood Mage not level 3, but Siphon is okay. And if you have that one level of Banish, that's also fine. So the level of the Blood Mage are not that important. Same goes for the Blade Master. The Shadow Hunter is the most important one here. And that's why he's going to focus on him. Getting up, but getting him up to level 3 as fast as he can. For level 2, he'll wave. Dark Ranger getting level 4 here. Or close to level 4. <laughs> the towers fortify the undead base now, who is just going for more and more fiends with the first defense upgrade. But a lot of experience is going towards MP. Some of experience as well. A lot of giant strength against the nuke. And tier 3. And Venom Spears are coming, everybody. Players' forces are under attack. 
So I don't think it's... Okay, this is Hippo Riders then. The attack upgrade is coming and Double Engine of Wind must be Hippo Grips then. And there's a lot of archers, so... Indicating Hippo Grip play again. Shadow Hunter is far, far away though, and oh, the Blood Mage getting nuked, uh, the, the, the Blade Master getting nuked here. Vanish again. No call, Nova to follow that up. He does have enough mana, so maybe a little miscommunication between the two here. Because the Banish is, of course, a nice way to get rid of the damage from the Blade Master, but ideally, you want to use it for the nuke of Coil Nova to amplify the damage. Tier 2 from Yumiko. Oh, the Blood Mage fell! How did that happen? Must have been out of position. Sorry, I missed that. But there are so many towers already. One masonry upgrade. Can they reach, though? Red spot creep for TH. Level 4 and a bit dark ranger. Cloth for 6 is nice. Heal scroll is also nice. Because you have to go super far away from your base to get that scroll. Well, my internet is not doing the best job at the moment. Sorry for a few spikes. Should be better in a bit. Or not. Quite a few hiccups here. Okay, it's getting better. Yeah, sorry about the spikes. If you're watching the live stream. The thing is that TH and Infi only have piercing damage in their army, right? Piercing and hero damage. A what can they do? I mean, what do they have against Fiends A-bombs? Double crypt Fiends now. On the other side, Breakers even? Nothing yet. Ah, T2 is not finished. But also Rifleman would do a pretty good job on paper. And the next expansion is coming up with a fortified tower, but this is immediately cancelled. <coughs> but at the head of this map, in the north of Goldshire, there's a great hole up! So there is two gold mines for one, two, zero, uh, for Infi and TH against only one or two additional gold mines. And it's another barracks. It's triple barracks now. This must mean knights. Then I don't understand the abomination. Maybe it's just a small little replacement. But yeah, they have to focus on it. Best anti-air. Good damage against everything they have. And they take reduced damage from piercing. So fiends are key here. Double heal scroll and a town portal so he can get out of there. Doesn't want to fight this for sure, as so much of his army is still waiting in the main. But the clock is ticking against the undead human team. Next mercenary upgrade, tier 3 tech. Yeah, he's getting ready for knights for sure. What about the upgrades? 0 2 and 2 1. I think the Wyverns are 0 0. Yes, he doesn't have a war. Oh, he does have a war mill. But they have Envenomed Spears, which is a nice damage boost as well. 62 food for WFZ, 34 for Yumiko only, but that's quite normal. Normal is also the second hero choice, which is the Paladin, but if that guy will come out, I'm not so sure about it. Either he kills the altar and the Paladin doesn't get out, or the Paladin gets out and he's dead. But I think it's the first option. Oh, no holy light. A player's forces are under attack. Three, three, two heroes for human or uh, human undead combo. And yeah, I don't really get that hippogriff play. Seems like a cookie cutter build with fiends then. Oh, but the damage is pretty sick. Close to level four on the blade. Fourth barracks. Wow. One, two, three, four barracks. A 
town is under siege. And three heroes on both sides. This seems to be the critical mass as he's getting rid of the towers super quick. Second masonry upgrade is done, but not strong enough against this as it seems. TP pretty defensive. And what's the blood mage doing over there? He is quite exposed. Next expansion is coming up, by the way. The Blade Master has no Orb of Lightning, otherwise this Blood Mage uh, or it would force a Town Portal. Kodo Beasts are coming for even more damage. And they kind of bleed them dry. I mean, they had to invest so much into the Static Defense. Especially Yumiko. And yeah, this is not well protected at all. Level 4 on the Blade. Kodo with the Aura, plus 9 damage on the Wyvern. On each and every single Wyvern. TC for additional attack and movement speed as well. This time the town portal was a little more aggressive, but he can't get the web out. Focusing on the Dark Ranger illusion here. Quite a few mistakes. But knights are coming. And if Yumiko... Yeah, he's breaking upkeep now. If he gets the time, then he might be able to turn this around. But we have 77 orc supply, 74 knight up supply. And the scroll of the beast that is working on a little bit of it. Yeah, Yumiko is the weakest link. More skeletons. This is, of course, tremendous against this. They're mining from four gold mines now. They can easily replace. I like how he uses the Hippogriff Riders as basically a meat shield for the Wyvern. But here we go. First big fight. Web is coming in. Ideally, he would like to kite, but there's no place for that now. Nova rattling through as well. This knight has been safe with the bandage, but there's no Holy Light coming for him at the moment. But he webs all the Wyvern. This is looking good so far, but oh my god, this critical strike against the Abomination. Level 4 on the Shadow Hunter, who still has a greater mana potion, so more and more and more heal waves coming his way. He wants to get rid of the TC, but can't really. But the numbers for Infia dwindling speed scroll, not trying to get out, but the fiends, man. There are only three left, excuse me, two left, and they are just dying. This is just the pure critical mass. And the skeletons are so goddamn strong. The knights don't do anything against them. He provided him so many corpses. And the damage is still okay. He lost a lot, or they lost a lot. <coughs> but it's still fine. The statue has to work overtime now <laughs> against all this. But it's also good experience on the flip side. Level 2 on the paladin. And he's going devotion aura again. So Knights and Devotion Aura are one of the biggest threats later on in the game, especially with defense upgrades, but heavy, heavy losses. 44 and 49 supply versus 73 and 80. I mean, yeah, they are producing a lot. A lot of stuff is coming over, but he wants, or they want to end this now. Getting rid of more economy of WFZ. And they have to re-engage this again with the town is limited army they have. The Dark Ranger is actually getting closer to 6, right? Oh, she's 6! I want to see Puss, uh, Charm. The ultimate of the Dark Ranger, of course, taking over some units. And there we have it. The first knight in the army, also a mountain giant. Okay, now they're tooling ar uh, fooling around with them. I mean, they are not a solution against knights, but stealing them is and spot or taunt can be used against them. Wow, my god, this damage against the Blood Mage. No chance. 1-0 for TH and Infi. Due to mass. Pure excellence of massing units after an expansion. <coughs> Even though there was no diversity in the, uh, in the attack type, was sufficient. And yeah, Wyvern are pretty good damage to lose. And if you protect them with a shitload of Hippo Riders, then what can you do? I mean, bad Riders? Yeah, but you don't have them. And from one great 2 and 2 map to the other, from Goldshire, we're going on to Lost Temple. A very classic Blizzard map. And classy people we have in our Back to Warcraft community. Gosu Gohan, for example, resubbing for 20 months already. 
Nagi made resubbing for four months, four months and still going strong. Love you guys. Love you too, mate. And Ruff Makot89. Ruff Marco TTE, I don't know. For eleven months already. Thank you for the support. <laughs> I'm looking like a rock star. This is fucking shit. I don't know what's wrong with my hair. Just a bad hair day. But I think I have to go through these comments uh, the entire time. Mass tank. Mass tanks takes too much time, I guess. Gyrocopters. Gyrocopters could work. But on the other side, I think, um, uh, okay, something is wrong here. I don't think you get the critical mass of gyrocopters in time. I'm not sure. Do you remember a two and two mix of Korea and China? I remember that back in the day, Hasselops played with TH a lot. So that would be German and Germany and China. But I can't think of anything. Then then TH teamed up. Okay. Okay. Didn't see that, unfortunately. They had much time? No. When did they have time? They were under pressure since the expansion were coming up. I don't think they had much time. By the way, the game has been re-hosted or closed, so I don't know. <laughs> Mikey and Rekram have both subbed again. M Mikey for four months, Rekram for three months. Uh, thank you, Mike, for all the support you've given us over the years. And Rekram, shout out to you for uh, doing so much good work with or for Walker 3 info. Also, David, who is watching. Nice job on the new site. Walker 3 info got a facelift and is now supported on mobile devices, which is super duper awesome. Mosta has subscribed as well. Boom, one year and counting. Keep it up. I will keep it up. I plan on casting tomorrow again, but unfortunately the team event starts on Thursday, no, Tuesday, not Monday, so I don't know what I'm doing today. Maybe a it's time for a podcast, I think. It's definitely time to bring Scouted back, and we have some people lined up for that. Will they keep the colors now, or... Ah, we'll see about that. We are in game, we are on Twisted now, so it was, uh, they hosted the wrong map, unfortunately. Would have loved to see Lost Temple, but I think we will later. Who doesn't love LT, right? Well, maybe WFC doesn't. For Yumiko it should be fine. Shirt is pretty nice, right? Uh, we got a few of those signed at GCS. I still have to figure out who's gonna get them and what do you have to do for it. But yeah, there's gonna be a few contests. We have four more shirts who are not signed. So I think I will keep one more and raffle out three. But yeah, that's maybe for next year. Ah, maybe it would be a good idea to do it in the community cup we're doing. When do we do that, by the way? We had a map contest, in case you're not aware. And we have our winners. Very, very cool maps. Very interesting maps. And maybe they can be a little... inspiration for some map makers. For example, we have a 
we have a match. Uh, we have a map that features a random building. So it's either a marketplace or a shop or nothing. I don't know if it's possible to get a merc camp there. But yeah, random buildings. I think the idea is really cool. So did they pick? Yeah, TH and Infi not playing random random. They picked Night Elf Orc. And this looks like a Keeper of the Grove play. I don't know. Keeper of the Grove is so squishy later on. Ah! He has a chain. Ah, and I can maximize it again. Nice! For the past few days I was struggling on Netties because... I couldn't get the game in... What's it called? Not window mode. I had to watch it in window mode. Now I have the full screen again. And fuck. Usually the transition is there to go in game, but a bit lazy today as it seems. And they did change the colors, of course. Boom. Infian TH leading 1-0. Spawning in the upper right and bottom right of Twisted. Of course, you're all familiar with Twisted. We see a neutral hero build for TH again. TH playing the Knight of Infi playing the Orc race. And again, the double barrack strap. It's kind of funny how the Dark Ranger is once again TH's solution against Yumiko. I mean... We've seen seen this so often. So Blade Master, no keeper of the growth then, but a huntress build order with only one engine of war. But yeah, pretty sure it's going to be a Dark Ranger, especially since he's scouting and he will see the double barracks again. And what's better against Mass Footman than... Oh, actually, it's a Mountain King. What's better against Mass Footman than a Dark Ranger? Maybe a level Panda, but maybe you don't have the time to level it. Once again, Lich first. And so that's a pretty good nuke with Stormbolt and Nova. But we'll keep an eye on the tavern. And the tavern says... Nothing yet. There she is. All right. And the Blade Master. So again, dark arrows against Footman. She can't be coiled, obviously. So not that easy to nuke her. Blade Master is out. So I don't know. Should be Frost Armor first again. Not Nova. So until the heavy nuke is up, this would this should take some time. Second engine of war, by the way, by TH here. And finally we see the crypt on WFC's side as well. At the moment he's just feeding Yumiko. But I don't know if this mass footman thing works against Dark Ranger hunts. Because Dark Ranger is a counter to Footman and Huntress are a counter to Footman. A town is under siege. And the techs are gonna be late. So I don't know. A player's forces are under attack. T2 tech by Infi already one third done. On the other side we don't Ah, there's the tech. A little behind. Graveyard is coming as well, so they will go into Fiends again.
So they're freeing up the expansion. I guess both players are going to do it. A little the scouting here siege. from WFZ. Are they expanding already on the way to tier 2? I think. Yeah, it's kind of a good idea to do that. Oh, Blade Master is here. It doesn't steal anything though. Gets a bit of experience, but not the Ogre Mage I... Was it Boots? Let's see correctly. Yeah, Boots of Speed. Quite nice. Can he get another Storm Bolt out? He is revealed. But not for much longer. So I think he's just gonna leave him alone. A player's forces are under attack. And there's the Tree of Life. Yep, both players are expanding. Jimiko once again fortifying it before building the Town Hall. But I think his timing is a lot better. Last time there were Wyvern already. No, no, there wasn't Wyvern. It was just mass Huntress rush onto the expansion. This time the base is a lot. Oh, it's actually Nova first. There were a lot of Huntress storming onto the town hall of Yumiko. This time only four so far. A player's and forces are under attack. Five. But yeah, the map is a lot bigger from gold mine to gold mine, so. This makes the timing a little better for Kimiko and WFZ on this side. He can harass a little with skeletons, but you know, there's so many footmen. A town is under siege. Double beast to again. Shadow Hunter, the obvious hero. Can he actually get a kill here? No way! No. <laughs> So, it is going better. Expansion not cancelled this time. Blade Master super under level. The first tower is up already. Gets one kill, but come on, that doesn't really count. Is there dust against him? Nope. The TH is using the time to level up the Dark Ranger to level 3. Good damage, plus 5. And it's impressive how much Infi can do. Without a barracks, without grunts, just with the Blade Master. This time we have a single slaughterhouse, DK second, and no second crypt. That means he's not getting feeded that much. And of course, Yumiko not checking yet, waiting for the shop. A player's forces are under attack. So of course the big threat is a high-leveled Coil Nova Stormbolt nuke. Maybe even with Banish on tier 2. Dark Ranger can silence, yeah, but she can't really silence everything. So in 1 on 1, of course, the Dark Ranger is very, very nice against nuke. In 2 on 2, it's a lot harder. Stormbolt, there we have it. Nova as well. No mana! He's surrounded and forced into a town portal. Well reacted. A nice teamwork by Yumiko and WFC. But yeah, the Wyvern Harass is already there. This time WFC has a nice spirit tower up, or will have it up, to secure his acolytes. He's not on tier 3 yet, though. That will hurt him. And as a response, we see earlier Rifleman. So, most likely again, mass piercing damage. Potion of greater healing. But there isn't too much surface to attack. Because of this, because of this, because of this. What's going on in the main? He's trying to break it. Dark Ranger does. Good amount of damage. The barracks goes down. He cancelled the rifleman, if I'm not mistaken. And they have to react to this. Or go for a counter push. There are two towers and a lot of militia. And what can they do now? Oh, it's only footmen, but it's an orc base. It's so easy to crack, usually. They get rid of a lot of burrows here, that's for sure. But on what cost? Lich. It's a nice Nova out, catches the coil as well. It's level 2 skeletons already, they are so strong. Speed scroll for reformation there. Where they have a Berserker, so that 
good usage of the mercenaries here, which was not possible on Goldshire. So additional piercing damage stops the Wyvern, stops the Huntress for now. And earlier Fiends, this looks good for WFZ. He has to get rid of the minions here. And the best way is to kill the Dark Ranger without a town portal. Is surrounded, gets a bash. Speed scroll is not helping here because she's stuck in between everything. Thanks to this skeleton here. And the Dark Ranger falls. Oh, oh, oh. Level 3 on both heroes. You got a silence out. But I think there's going to be another uh, victim soon. Go back against the Wyvern. The skeletons, man. They are cleaning house at the moment. Question is for how long and when will the heroes dominate again? Level 3 on the Shadow until he just arrived, basically. Finally, the riflemen come in, but the Dark Ranger is already back from the tavern. And actually, the skeletons are holding this. This TK has a big healing potion, uses it now, but forced into a town portal. And WFC is down to 31 supply. That is ridiculous. 46 and 47 there. And 31. That is that is so bad. A player's forces are under 30 supply down. And the gold mine is not properly mining. Skeletons are quite good, especially if you face a lot of fiends and riflemen. TC third again. No big surprise. No Kodo yet though. He has almost all the levels he wants. The Belt of Giant Strength is good against the nuke, so I think he will keep it for now until he needs that money. 800 gold at WFZ side. Why? <laughs> nice to see a few Owl Scouts. Very rare to see that. And Tiny Great Hall! Again, just as they did on Goldshire. Win the first fight and then... Expand again. At the moment, there's no solution against this. Lack of damage, lack of everything. We do have a level 3 DK now, but what will that do to them? The base is under attack again. Fiend falls immediately. It looks like the damage is just too much. No shot means no statues, means no healing, means no mana rack. And the tower here was of course designed to help with the uh, wyvern to the harass, but for a siege, this is pretty bad. TP out for TH, now he can easily afford it as he stays on 50. Again, we see the double engine of wind transitions into archers a little bit. Almost level 5 Dark Ranger. It's not unlikely that we will see Charm again. So in Yumiko's base, still tier 1. And still tier attack. 1 here. They get the Kodo though. Just tier 2 and tier 1 against tier 3 and tier 2. Two techs ahead. Belt of Giant Strength again. A town is under now heal scrolls and protection scrolls. We have an Invis Mountain King. Inventories are not looking that bad. Once again, just pure piercing damage. No blockers in this army except the Mauler. Can they get a better position now? Of course, the Dark Minions. They did a phenomenal job. And he ripped the expansion once. Now maybe time to rip the... Uh, the, the main base. Now it's time to rip the expansion. But okay, we're in for a base race. We have fortified defenses. Or reinforced defenses with fortified armor. That means piercing damage doesn't do shit against these buildings. A town is under siege. Expo is running. Harass is going on here. He's just killing the town hall. And they, they just give it up. This is a little undecisive by, by WFC and Yumiko, I think. Wait, actually killing. 
There's a TP on the TC. But Yumiko severely damaged. But they get the fortress. So they are down to three gold mines. And the tech is gone. But will Yumiko's base withstand this attack? Do they have a town portal? Yes, they do. But they want to get another expansion here, as it seems. I mean, they have a bit of time. Since everything is quite fortified with the farm, with the lumber mill. The wyvern not supposed to happen and now th is based on that pressure a i mean to crack that undead base that's, that's gonna be super hard but here's another expansion coming up as well as double engine of lore a nice little transition for bears obviously normal damage against medium armor is key mass repair but he gets rid with a coil and stumble of two of them but at the moment it's two gold mines versus two WFZ is d expanding, but <laughs> builds a tree of life right in his face. Okay, the tech is gone for TH. There was never a tech for Yumiko, so I think this trade is good. But yeah, he had to cancel this. 500 gold still with 60 food. Yumiko on the other side, 33 only, and. He doesn't have anything anymore. No town hall, no farms. A few farms, but that doesn't really count. He can't produce anything for the rest of this game. Same goes for TH, most likely, though. A thousand gold. Great hall is being rebuilt. He's on quad beast too. <laughs> Seems like it's too much again, but we haven't seen uh, this one, one on uh, two and two fight. The town is under A player's force Four. And he finds the lores. He can't tech two bears. So Infi is the win condition now. If he gets this critical mass of Wyvern, which at the moment doesn't seem like it. Okay, he has to defend this now. That is the second last remaining gold mine. Forces a counter TP. There's another tree of life here. Ah, but they find this one. Oh, nice. I love this game so far. Can he somehow go to Lores again? No, right? He has one. He has some Hippogriff Riders as well now. But cancels the next expo of TH. And he sees this. He knows about this. But okay. Can the Wyvern and Skeletons win this again with just critical mass piercing damage? If they start to one shot, there's nothing. Not too much that is more dangerous than Wyvern. A player's force but we have one, attack. two, three, four, five, six, seven fiends and a good bunch of riflemen. Infuse back to two bases. And TH is mining gold from two mines as well. Third one coming up. I feel like the clock is on Yumiko and WFZ. They spent so much gold protecting this. Ay, 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 ay. I don't know if that's worth it, actually. A player's forces are under attack. I like how they constantly get rid of the Kodos. Otherwise, we would have plus nine Wyvern again. This makes things a lot easier. 
Granger 5.6. Crypt number one is down. So no double production of fiends anymore. TH's army is of course ridiculous. Uh oh oh. Hero focus going on. Stop! He can't do anything! Oh my god, that nuke! There was a heal scroll, there was an invo potion, and there was a protection scroll. There's silence and there's a backstep. Double kill for Infi. He's just going mad. And he kills one unit after another, one hero after another. Protection scroll now on the Wind Riders. He takes them out quite fast, but I don't think it's enough. Where's the next storm? We're waiting for it. Would be great against the Fiends. He doesn't even need it, I guess. 20 supply only for Yumiko. 64. And here's Charm again. We have a Fiend on the side of the Night Elf Orc team. And yeah. This is ridiculous. This is so one-sided. This is the 2-0 for sure. <laughs> Those volleys. They were ungodly sick. GG! 2-0 and match points for Infi and TH. Yumiko, man. Must be desperate now. Again, it's the combo of Infi and TH that uh, stops him. For now, at least. For now. But that was quite cool. So much multitasking going on. Nice macro game. Solely focusing on killing gold mines. <laughs> nice to see the chat after this. Oh, this is why I love 2 and 2. This is really fun. And what I also love is your support once again with the first donation of the day. Enten Eichel with 10 euros. Thank you guys very much for putting so much effort into this beautiful game. Even if it's still over 10 years old. 15 this year. Uh, or 10 years ago that I played this game active, I still really enjoy it because this is what I grew up with, isn't it? Danke Männers, ihr seid stark. Thank you very much, Enten Eichel. And uh, glad that you still enjoy this game after more than 10 years. Mr. GN has resubscribed for 10 months and Psycho 3 has subscribed as well. So uh, the support, I feel it, it's strong today. By the way, actually, Yumiko met with TH and Infi recently and they sat at the same table at Lin's wedding, I feel. At least I saw them on one picture and Ugriline was so excited, like... Finally, we have them on one picture. He was working so hard for this all the time. But yeah, I hope they enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, we have a Bang My Wife Neo account. That's new. Maybe I missed you all the time, but that's my second favorite nickname at the moment that we have. Unfortunately there's nothing that can beat uh, Remo's roommate at the moment. We're off to a good start, of course. So that's that, that's for sure. This is match points already. And we load into Centaur Grove, interestingly. <laughs> is he the one that lives in the closet? I don't know if he's still alive. To be honest. I haven't heard of Remo since. He can't communicate via phone because he's a stupid idiot and bought a Chinese phone that doesn't support European uh, connections. And he has no internet. So at the moment we have to send letters back and forth.
So. I had a solution for this window problem, but apparently it's gone. Whatever. You said ravens to each other. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do. Oh, and they changed all the colors. Come on, guys. Really. If they would know how stressful this is to change the colors, they would still do it, I guess. Just to annoy me. Match points! TH and Infi can double their prize money now. As the winning team of this best of five gets 600 bucks and the loser gets only, well, only 300. Still fine for a fun 2 and 2 comp uh, competition. But yeah, Yumiko and WFZ, they have to step up their game. They lost to Shao KK and won to 0 3 0 already. And leaving the playoffs 0 6, that would be. Quite an embarrassment. Hard night? Nah, not really, but a long night. Long night and not too much sleep. But I wasn't drinking, so... I'm feeling super fine, I'm just looking tired. And I have coffee, so... And I got you guys. So that's super fine. Four. We have uh, three put the second as a ten month resub. Let's do it again. Oh yeah, let's do it forever. So Yumiko and WFZ in blue at the top of Centaur Grove. First time actually that we in this tournament see cross position. Now we had close position twice on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday it was. Lich first, Blade Master first. What do we have here? No hero. Just going for for tavern hero. A town is under siege. For the first time, we see an early lumber mill. forces are under thing. attack. This is very standard, except that there's no hero. Or am I completely missing something? But no, right? There is no big blue dot. What the hell is this? Also WFZ playing standard with only one crypt, not feeding. So this is a very different strategy. It's a Naga first, okay. Yumiko <laughs> playing TH tactics now with a Naga tower push. A player's what? forces are Must be a tower push, right? Against the orc. That's of course a dick, kind of, kind of a dick move. Because maybe the only one in the world to place this Naga Tower Rush is TH. And since they have this feud going on, there's definitely a reason why he picks this Naga now. But we have double slow with Frost Arrow and the Frost Armor. But this doesn't look good, man. TH already got the first skeleton, if I'm not mistaken. And there's not too many workers left. I think this... Push is designed to fail, man. Look at this focus on the workers. Infi and TH are playing this almost perfectly. So far, at least. But it's a one borrow, t uh, not a one borrow tech, but it's a very fast tech by Infi. I don't know. Blade Master is hurting. He doesn't have mana at the moment, so maybe that would be his desi uh, de desire, demise here. And without the Blade Master, what can he really do? Hunters are doing good damage against the Naga, but the Lich is still rocking. Dark Ranger about to die here, but he doesn't want to dive as he's still scared about his Naga. He has to uh, stay with there, but Naga dies. Can be bought back quite easily and quite fast, as long as he keeps these towers up. First Arcan is already there. Guard Tower is coming, but that will take some time. The Lich holds this at the moment. Nice. Shadow Melt, also TH. Keeping this Dark Ranger alive. We have Defend now on Yumiko's side. But he has to heal up. First APs are there. Oh, 
He uses so much frost armor. He doesn't have a Nova once he levels up. Shadowhunter second. And the first AP is down. I think the second one is not really relevant here. We have Nova now. The Dark Ranger has to be incredibly careful. Oh, and the pause of the game. I can't really see who that is. Issues as it seems. Selenia K has subscribed with Twitch Prime again for nine months in a row. I'll keep subbing and donating until Neo can properly pronounce my name. <laughs> yeah, man, I butcher this every time. I'm very sorry. I will, I will take a crash course and uh, come up with like fifteen different versions. But maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't. So, I guess TH is still on tier 1 with Huntress. This won't help against towers. Okay, we've seen Unicorn already as well. They bought a lot of time for one tower, for two towers, for the shop. And that means, of course, the Undead has finally regeneration with the scroll of regeneration from the human shop, which is absolutely necessary. Yeah, he lures him out, sends the hurt ones back. I think he's wasting some time. He should heal up already, but then, okay, the Naga is there now. More control, more damage. And off we go. So much value in this scroll of regen. So much regen. No levels on the Orc heroes. Nothing that can cancel this. And it's time to kill the shop. This is looking way better than expected, actually. <laughs> nice lumber mill there. Speed scroll peons, can they escape? Big Exodus. Yep. Okay, maybe they can get a new base up. That's gonna be hard. Glaive throwers. Their forces are under attack. Okay, better than Huntress, I guess. But can he just run into them with footmen? I think he can. Well, what else is he supposed to do? Archers have no damage at all. Hunters die like flies. And yeah, Glaive Throwers have the range. So with good Mike... He's actually rebuilding the base. As long as his tier 2 is still there. He's building the beast trees. Interesting. But of course it's gonna be two gold mines versus one. I love this tower positioning. There's nothing they can do, especially nothing that TH can do. Is this a, ch an, a ramp? A or is it like a Twisted attack. Meadows map? Looks like a Twisted Meadows ramp, where you actually don't have a miss percentage. Almost a fiend's around. But how... Oh, is she supposed to get out there, except with a town portal? GG! We go into map four then. That was fast. Centaur Grove. A Naga Tower push against TH. Puts a smile on my face, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, this Dark Ranger must be bugging Yumiko pretty hard. But. He got his revenge. The first one. And. They make this a series. I like. What I also like is Miss Elisa subbing for three months here. Good, strong. Uh, oh, sorry. Going strong. A little bit of entertainment mid exam studies. BTWGG. Thank you very much, Elisa. And uh, good luck in your exams. I actually didn't think this would work because there were so few. 
workers left? And I thought he wouldn't have the time. Did you see what Moon's fan club got him for his birthday? That is in four days. It's actually really cool. Um, they rented a billboard in a subway. One of the biggest stations in Korea, actually. So this is it. You can see it on Ugri WC3 on Twitter. Playoff Walker 3, Legend of e for Esports, Gift to the World. Congratulations, Moon. He's turning 31 in a bit. So, I don't know if it's Wawa and Snow and all the others who did that and Varia. But that's that's an awesome thing, man. I have my 10-year casting uh, celebration in May, I guess. So if I get a little billboard here in Hamburg, that would be nice. <laughs> What station was it? Um, Sam Seong station? I don't really know how to pronounce it. It's basically... Yeah, Sam Seong, I think. So that's definitely in Seoul. Moon, of course. A living legend. One of the few nominees for the first eSports Hall of Fame in Korea. Maybe not the first, but like they built an official one. I think even with a museum and stuff, so Moon is nominated for that. We can buy a pony? What am I supposed to do with a pony? Why would you imagine, like, me on... Okay, that would look super funny. Me on a fucking mini horse. In the middle of Reeperbahn. <laughs> that would be the... Yeah, that would probably be the best. I can put a tag on a Stromkasten. Yeah, please do so. Is Grubby Lin or Moon the best? I think it's between Lin and Moon. Sorry, Grub. <laughs> <coughs> But I think just the fact that they played Warcraft longer. I don't know. I think Moon is one, Lin is second, Grubby is third, then Sky. Those are the top four. For me personally, I mean... Everybody has a different opinion on this. Grubby's third in earnings. Are you sure about Yeah, I think you're right. Should be Moon, Lin, and Grubby in earnings. That's true. Or did Infi or a TH overcame him? Let me check this real quick. Oh, yeah, no. Grubby is third, but only $11,000 away is TH and Infi. So if they continue to impress in Warcraft and maybe win Nice, so could they... Do they get 11,000 for Niso? Uh, not, not Niso. NSL. Which is happening at the end of December. Ah, no, it's just $8,000, so. If Infi wins NSL and Super GCS, then he is rank 3. Same goes for TH. All right, let's go into map four. We are on Death Trap, a map that not too many of you know, I think. Except if you are quite old school and watched, oops, and watched WC3L back in the day. The ESL invented this or came up with this map when there was still a great team league. 
Sorry, I have to swap the colors again. What a surprise. TH and Infian blue this time. WT and Unico in red. That's better, boys. Still match points, still bronze medal points for TH and Infi. This is not really an expansion map. As you can see, there's only four additional gold mines in the middle. Pretty easily accessible for the opponent's team. And what do we see now? Looks like a neutral hero build again, right? But no lumber mill this time. It's definitely a neutral hero. And this tower rush worked quite well. If Infi... Is he going for a barracks? Yes, he's preparing for this as well. So yeah, not, not an expansion map. Um, or not that easy to pull it off. Quite good to rush, I would say. Even though... The bases are a the little further behind, uh, away from each other. Oh, it's a Mountain King. Maybe just a fake Mountain King. We have a Warden in 2 on 2. What? I have... I don't want to say I've not seen this before because I'm like casting for 9 years and I've basically seen everything, but... I can't recall seeing a Warden in 2 on 2. Pen of Knives should be good though. Players' forces are under attack. And he goes through with his Mountain King, right? Huh. Interesting opening. Plate Master, of course, for Infi. And MK is there. He actually goes through with his MK. So we have DK MK. Coil Stormbolt, not that bad. We have Militia the going out. Forces are under attack. Is he going for this? It was scouted by TH. First Blood, by the way. Okay, maybe the Warden is just roaming around, buying time for the Blade Master, but shouldn't that be the other way around? They are going for an expansion, and... I don't know. This position is so bad. Should I go strike? Nope. Because when I I Infi and TH are coming for this, they walk straight onto it. Oh, MK is in so much trouble. Pops out there. Another Windwalk has to be used. Is there a coil left? No, that's not. Infi just gets away with the speed scroll. As you can see, from base to base, they can easily like walk into the expansion. If WFC and Yumiko want to defend this, they have to go across the forest. This is always bad. A player's Single forces crit. are under attack. No tech. Also here, no tech. In the meantime, Engine of War is creeping up. Warden got, of course, the experience from the Mountain King. And Mountain King without level 3 is just underwhelming. At least Yumiko and WFZ got one map in the playoffs. <laughs> They're not leaving this without winning a single map. But maybe this works. Maybe they will surprise me again. They did surprise me on Centaur Grove. Unholy Aura and Defend Footman, of course, a nice synergy because they are not that slow then. Town is under siege. Also coming, but the techs are so late. Still no undead tech. Orc tech is almost through. Also the night elf. Tech the versus expo. Are under attack. Yeah, and of course, Stormwald, Unholy Aura, Mass Footman makes it so easy to surround. But there's no guard tower yet, so the Blade Master can basically do whatever he wants. The Warden is harassing here, I like that. Second barracks coming up now. Pen of knives. Ay, 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 ay. This will hurt. It's level 3 on the warden, so 
pretty much the perfect counter to this mass footman play. A player's nice a timing if he realizes it, the that the tech is finishing. But it's night time, I think he can't see. So much going on at the same time. Lots of kills here. There's nothing remaining in the base for Yumiko. So he sees the tier 2, but we don't see any tier 2 buildings. Pen and Brewmaster second. Of course he needs... Uh, this double AoE will be good. He saw the second Parex. Pen of Knives in. And of Mana Stealing being used. So one more. That's a lot of damage. Didn't hit the peasants though, there's no tower, and here comes the Breath of Fire, but immediately walking into a surround, well reacted from Yumiko, keeping this close, Wand of Mana stealing being used again, calling the Fiend to keep her alive, Warden with so much damage in the Panda falls without another Breath of Fire, and now it's up for the Blade Master to take care of this, TP out, but how, it was a little too late I guess, and just gets two kills, and he kept every single Fiend alive, not bad, Yumiko WFC, absolutely not bad. But there's no shop. There's no shop for them. Oh no. But Warren is out of mana. Panda's dead. So they are not in a position to fight. Engine of Wind again. In the Orc base, we see Double Beast Stewie with Raiders this time. Greater mana, nice for the SH, of course. But they actually make this expansion work. I am surprised. Tier 2 tech is on the way as well, so statues are inbound. And it's time for Hippogriff taming again. Seems to be fairly normal in this 2 and 2 cup to go for Hippogriff riders. A player's forces are under attack. Is under siege. One does have another pen of knife gets a quad kill. Oh, this hurts the economy so much, and the blade master is doing the same here. Yumiko's income is not the greatest at the moment. Not at all. Actually, it's down to zero. Where is it? A player's forces are under yeah. attack. Zero income for the human. And this is good old grubby strategy, distracting on one part of the map and going for radar attack on the other side of the map. Slaughterhouse and <laughs> rebuilds the altar. Can't go for a lich now because the raiders killed the altar. Eight footmen and the MK is back, close to three. But he needs so many resources to just get his peasants back up. Players' forces are under attack. And water creeping up. If she gets to level 5. Actually, did he get the panda back? Yeah. I was a little worried for him. And now, 5 raiders versus 2 towers. 6 raiders, actually. He ignores the towers. He just goes straight for the expansion. That's exactly why it's so easy to tear it down. You see it. Doesn't have pillage, but whatever. It is base, though. Combined attack. And he ki they keep him supply stuck already, but for how much longer? The footman will do good against the raiders, but not against the warden. That's why the stormboard is coming in very fast. Breath of Fire doesn't do anything that hurt, actually. Is there a heal scroll anywhere? I don't see it. Hippo riders are nice. A few raiders are falling, but... That fan of knives could save them the game. Stormboard on the panda, and he dies for the second time. So much healing involved. Gets another breath out, but doesn't help him in the end. Area of effect after area of effect. And so... He gets rid of the feeds. Oh, Shadow Strike. That means she has no blink. On oh, the MK. Is surrounded again. Trying to force a TP there. To keep his MK alive. I think his entire army died. There's not a single footman involved. 
But WFC kept this Fiend's life, and that's the most important thing! Oh, one dies. 38 supply by Infi and supply stuck. 42 for TH. But the expansion is down. 14 supply for Yumiko and 38 only. A player's they did are under their attack. best with this attack, I think, but losing this expansion. That hurt. And it's not like the AoE is getting weaker or anything. Level 4, Helm of Valor. Level 4 on the Warden too. And it all started with the Warden and Blade Master attacking the peasants. Player's forces are under attack. Speaking of which, it's not the peasant this time. He's mining with three acolytes. That's it. Okay. Maybe there was a little harass that I missed. Shadowhunter getting to level 3. Night Elf army. Looking good. No tier 3 necessary, of course. A player's forces are under finally a Lich second. That took forever. With 12 minutes into the game and he finally has the chance to go for a second hero while Yumiko is still on tier 1. Infi has tremendous heroes, goes for improved bows and more archers. WFC has to carry this somehow. Somehow. A player's he does have his echo back up, at least one base, so he can go into more footman production with defend. Good bank for the buck against basically everything except heroes. Ooh, this Blade Master. Plus 12. Score of Beast. Very nice for base races now. Raiders, Score of a Beast, have fun. There's no Dispel on this army. There's no Destroyer. There's no Wisps to carry, there's Players no Priests. Forces are under attack. What's the Lich doing? And what's Infi doing? Like, this was an easy kill. Oh, but he gets the TC here. Well done by Yumiko. Level 4 on the Mountain King. Can they actually turn this around? But as I said before, Raiders against the bases now. This is so strong. <coughs> and with what they have, barely defendable. And Snare 1, and Snare 2. Speed scroll being used, he's gonna kill all of them. He's trying to wreck the base, but with only footmen and with reinforced defenses, this is very hard to accomplish. Blade Master's taken care, backstab, one hit. Down. Yep, and he got all of it! Infi taking care that there's no Acolyte anymore. Going for the TC again. Getting it again! Nice dieback. <laughs> But also a nice stun. Stun hit a lot. But he doesn't get anything of value here. Well, they kill static defenses, tech buildings. I mean, he keeps some supply stuck, yeah. That's about it. There's one gold mine only. Here's one coming up. Here's one coming up. And they are preparing the next raider attack. But the uh, stronghold is down. Oh, fortress is gone. Down. It's definitely a base race again, but I don't want to be too optimistic. How do you want to win a base race against Panda and Raiders and Warden AoE? Doesn't seem to be pretty realistic to me, but okay. There's another expansion. Not running though. Yeah, tower's gone. We can just walk through this now. All the raiders are chopping down the last buildings of WFZ. A 
who is down at 43 supply. And I said he has to carry this without buildings. How do you want to carry this? And if just half of these expansion work, it's an easy win. But normal damage is good against buildings. They don't want to interfere right now. 43 and 28. Say it's 70 supply. A player's force side 50 and 34. So supply advantage on TH and Infi side, plus the big AOE. Next gold mine up. But one down. Three to go. A town is under the TH is making, like, playing this the, the best moon style one can do. But this could come down to buildings. And the raiders are the MVP of this. And of course the trees of life. There's no way in hell they can win this. this. Can they build something? Is there a worker? There is a worker. Yumiko has to build something quite soon. Both of attack for the blade. Oh yeah, baby. He does have the resources. I don't get it. He's not building anything. A town is under siege. And this is the last building they have. If the lumber mill falls, then the game for third is over, and the winners are Infi and TH, and that's the case here. They don't want an open fight, they can't win the base race, they are out of this tournament, and the third best 2-2 two -two team in the world are Infi and TH, and I think that's their best 2-2 two -two performance in recent years. In GCS competition, they were always eliminated before the playoffs, the final playoffs. And uh, now they get their comeback, they get their... Um, come up and against Yumiko and WFZ who finished fourth once again no big breakthrough for the two friends but yeah we have decided who is place uh, three and four and now there's only one more decision to be made who is the best two and two team in the world is it one two zero and Shao KK or is it Fly and Shishi I think it's still quite lucky that Ted and Hainu are not playing because they are the current world champions of GCS 2 and 2, but that's more than a year ago. So this will determine the best team that we currently have in competitive 2 and 2. 1 2 0 and Shao KK versus Fly and Shishi. Stay tuned, we're going to be right back and another best of 5 is waiting for you. So grab some snacks, grab some drinks and stay right where you are.